This is the second part of a two-part video that I'm exposing and explaining to you why the occupation in Oregon and the Bundy standoff were violent, not peaceful, and it was against the law. They used weapons to keep authorities and other citizens from approaching them or to be able to do their business in public areas, okay? And that is illegal. On the second part here, I got a, sh a picture of uh, Lavoy Finnegan here. Here's Lavoy telling everyone that wanted to hear that if the FBI was looking for him, that he wanted them to know where he was. He wasn't there with his, hand, with his hands up just waiting for them to get a warrant for his arrest. He so said he was there with his gun, his rifle, and two guns, one in his left side of his chest and the other one on the side of his right side of his thigh. Three weapons he had. And he will use it, he said. Now, he said he would not fire first, but <laughs> come on, that is stupid. I got. I have a gun here, but I'm not gonna fire first. But if you try to approach me to handcuff me, I will defend myself. What kind of mentality is that? What reason is that? What reasoning? An adult human being would say that that was peaceful. So anyway, just to show you the first time how this started and how La Boy came across to everyone as a violent person, and he. Pay with his life for that. Here's another picture, and this one, as you clearly can see, is over here. Is our friend Amon Bundy. All the people here, I don't know who they are, but that must be the council, the council of elder, at the Mayor. And you see all the guns here. Stand down, just like in the army, you go to a meeting, you sometimes you put your guns down there, sit down in a chair, drink a cup of coffee. Exactly, they were ready for combat. So don't tell me that they had no weapon, they never pointed at anyone, that it was peaceful, that the police can come and go. No, the police can only come and go, okay, when they were meeting with them. If somebody would have tried to arrest Ammon when he had all his bodyguard around, Okay, they would have made a firefight. Don't be so silly to think that wasn't. At least you should be proud to admit that you will fight for what you believe. What you are saying is that you are a piece of shit chicken hawks that go to a place with a big loud mouth and then chicken out and stand down and say, oh, but I didn't mean it. Well, sorry, that's not how it works. They were armed, they were violent, and they were doing it to do people harm. Again, you don't think that they were armed or interfering with public places? Well, here you go, look at this guy, he's over here in the middle of a road, county road, where people could not go across, you or I could not go across that road. Being in the impediment was not the police of the FBI or the state troopers. The impediment were the Yahoo's militia, which I hope all are in jail now, trying to play their game. Once you do that, and look at this. Remember, look at this picture here and this picture here. This is not a stand-down picture. This is not a non-threatening position. That's a very threatening position. You're carrying your gun at the ready with a full loaded 30 round magazine. Okay. Your finger almost on the trigger. Okay. But you are ready. You're ready. This man didn't have that gun exercising Second Amendment right, people. Don't be so foolish. Because we laugh at you when you make those statements. Again, I say stand for what you believe. Yes, you were there to fight. Say that. Be like a freedom fighter all over the world. 
They die for their belief. But not you people. You want to go do the job. You want to play the game. You dress up for the part. But then you decide not to go to the dance party. Don't be such a fool, okay? Admit it. You were there to do something that you guys all chicken out because you think it's a little game. You like to dress up like this, you know, like an operator, you know, <laughs> VIP security in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah, I know, they look cool, but they do the job. They don't chicken out when, they, when the bullets start firing. Not these guys. They full of shit, okay? And they were impeding people for, 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 to access to public areas. I'm going to show you another picture of the same guy here, which I hope is in jail. Now, you fools, militias, and so-called patriots, tell me, is that a non-threatening position here? Is, does this man have a right to tell the media, from whoever they were, not to be able to take pictures? The only person that was completely free to move around there was the make-believe journalist, Santilli, okay? But see, that man should have been arrested, okay, for impeding the media and exercising the media First Amendment right to free speech. But that's what they did. They were, they were threatening and they were violent, okay? So you got to say and believe the truth, because you always talk about the truth, and you always talk about we the people. They were um, out here violently, with arm, and threatening other people. Now the news today is the uh, buddy Amon Bundy was never thought about doing what he did. That he decided to do this, the invasion of the bird sanctuary, on the spot, on the spur of the moment, they say now, his lawyer. But you know what? We got all the uh, information right here. Listen to what he says. I'm asking you to come to Harney County to participate in this wonderful thing that the law is about to accomplish. See, my buddy Ammon... The Lord speak to him. You know who he reminds me of? A crazy pedophile, Muhammad. And Muhammad and the Lord talk to him too. And look at all the craziness that Muhammad created. Same shit with his Mormons, okay? Same thing with all Christians and with every religion. They all full of shit. So he didn't just come up with this shit during the rally in Burns. He planned this. He was there in October arguing and demanding from Sheriff Ward that he needed to do X, Y, and Z. Well, Ammon is just on Yahoo, okay? He's no constitutionalist. I guarantee you that Ammon cannot stand for two seconds with me to discuss the Constitution. He's not bright enough to understand it. It's a Mormon. I've got to tell you all. Any person that is a Mormon tell you that his intelligence is kind of on the low end. Because to believe the Book of Mormon, you got to be a nut. I don't particularly like to use cartoons like you conservatives like to use, but this one kind of says it very well. Because you see, you people, and I know you do, don't argue about it. I know you do. Be real and um, admit your shortcomings. Admit who you are. You see anybody, a black kid, a Muslim, a minority, a Hispanic, whatever, you see him with a gun and he's a thug, right? But if you are one of this so-called crazy militia, okay, he's some sort of a patriot. Well, they both tug. You see, the people that in Bunkerville, Nevada, at the Bundy Ranch, they tugs. The people in Oregon that invaded the bird sanctuary, they tugs too, just like the people in Ferguson that were riding and the people in Baltimore. No different. The only difference is the color of their skin, but they're all thugs the same. And the way the police handle all of them, it was the right way. People get killed, 
Michael Brown got killed in Ferguson? Tell me why. Not because he was black. That's bullshit. Michael Brown got killed because he resisted arrest. The bozo would be alive today if he didn't assist, resist arrest. Same shit with the bozo Finnegan. If he would not have resisted arrest, he would be alive today. But remember that Finnegan wanted to die. Just remember these words spoken by Amon Bundy during the stop before Finnegan was killed. When Finnegan took off, Amon Bundy told all the other ones, if we get killed here and Lavoy makes it out alive, he will never forgive us. See, they knew Lavoy mindset, how crazy Lavoy was, and how much he wanted to die to become a hero. Maybe he had a big old life insurance for the family. Who knows? I like to find out. Investigate that, Jew people out there. What was the amount of life insurance that Lavoy had? He committed suicide by cops, anyway. By cops, anyway. So in the end, I just show you that the occupation, that there was an occupation, even you now you deny it. Now some of you are saying that there wasn't even a standoff. You see, you people want to rewrite the Constitution to your liking and interpret the Constitution to your liking, but you also want to rewrite the dictionary to your liking. You keep now using semantics to say that there was not a standoff. And there was an arm, so I guess the guns were just, toy, were just toys, and that they never had threatened anyone. I guess word means nothing to you. But I just want to show you this as a little light-hearted side of this. Is uh, What was the purpose of Ryan Bundy over there anyway? You know, I never met the man, but... Every time he was with a phone on his ear, was he passing every information to his wife or was he having phone sex? I don't know. Whatever you want to say, but the man was always with a phone. Let's look at another picture of him on the phone. Everywhere he stood, uh, Ryan Bundy was always with a phone in his ear. I mean, what the hell is going on, man? Anyway, but yeah, I'm just telling you how the occupation went. It was a very violent act. They didn't allow anybody else in, you know, and the people that tried to go in there, they didn't agree with it. Like another militia group from Arizona, I got beat up. So, you know, people, don't, don't try to make it up. Stand for what you believe. Stand like real men and women, you know. Say, yes, we did this, and we tried to accomplish it, but we didn't do it. Don't chicken out and say that you weren't doing what you did. You're not no freedom fighter. Come on, you know what the freedom fighters all over the world are saying about you? They're laughing. <laughs> they realize that, well, the Americans are so full of shit. They want to play the freedom fighter game, but they don't want to stand by the rules of the game. <laughs> so anyway, that's what happens. Stop making up shit. Okay? Stop making information. The way you people operate is that you say that you believe in the Constitution, but then you say that the Supreme Court is in, in, un, unconstitutional. Well, you can't say that because the Constitution says that the Supreme Court is the top decision-making law body in the land. So whatever the Supreme Court says is constitutional. You might not like it and you might try to then argue against what they come up with, their argument, their resolution, but you cannot say that it's unconstitutional. It is an oxymoron. I'm sorry, I realized, I forgot. You guys are morons.